Okay, I'd like to make another CAD drawing, um, something different, and this time here, what I'm going to do is show you how to take a, a photograph or something um, like this one that maybe you found on the internet that you'd like to make this part or it's a part that you'd like to model or something such as that or it's drawings you've found. Um, obviously this drawing um, it's going to be a JPEG. It may be a, a bit of a pain to convert. So um, the thing to do with something like this is right click on it and go ahead and save the picture. Okay. I've already done this, but it's going to bring it up and there's, there's the name it's going to save the picture as. And I'll save it. And then I can go ahead and close the internet. Um, go to the directory where the picture is saved and it put it in my pictures so I'll open up my pictures now the easiest way to find the um, one I just downloaded is click on date and look for today's date and it'll bring that picture to the top of the list so I'll double click on it to open it okay there's the picture I just downloaded now I want to copy this and then scale it to the size that I want. So the first thing I want to do is actually enlarge the picture so that it's easier to see and work with. I'll get it somewhere here in a decent size. And then leave that in the background and go ahead and start eMachine Shop. Now, a feature in eMachine Shop, if you go into pre preference, is called tracing paper and if you click on tracing paper and then say OK you can see hopefully you can see with this that the image is in the background um, now and I can actually begin to draw it or trace over it I should say so I'm gonna start off with let me just start off with an, a crosshairs and that would probably be the easiest way to do it. Um, let's do it with a box just to locate it. So we're going to find this this point right here and to keep everything square I'm going to put this box from end to end to the top moving over trying to be careful to get on the center of the lines down a tiny bit. It's kind of hard with the mouse. And once I'm happy with it, I'll drop the box there. Then I want to hit Control D, and duplicate that box, drag it down, line it up with the bottom here. Alright, so I have my part squared in the center of the picture now, and it, it'll uh, <coughs> actually give me some reference points so that when I do trace these on here um, then I'm going to trace them on square and they'll be located correctly. So now I want to draw a line from the center here to the center on the bottom. And that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to pick up this first circle and the way I want to do this is I'm just going to use the crosshairs, locate it, bring it out, line it up to where it's visually correct, and then click, then hit Control D, make a copy of it, and instead of just dropping this, I'm going to drag it out of the way here for a minute, I'm going to draw a line again from here to the center and duplicate it. Control D. I'm going to take this line and move it from the center and lock it on there. And then bring the duplicate circle up and attach it to it. So now I've kept everything geometrically sound because the picture can be off just a little bit askew. Um, now I want to draw put the crosshairs here, line it up best I can, draw my next circle, 
fit it into place. Um, if you find that when you hit Control D, all your parts are intersect or laying on top of each other, and you can't tell how many you got, if you come up here to the top for the uh, nudge increment, you can put this at like a half inch or something. Uh, that'll make them instead of stacking right up on top of each other, um, a half inch apart. So we're going to hit Control D again. Control D again. One, two, three, four, and that spread them out so they're easier to see. I got one too many, so I'll delete it. Now I can take these and move them into the locations where I'm going to put them. I'm not not going to actually place them yet because I just placed the first one, and I want to get a measurement here. Um, take a line again, come from center to the actual center of the circle I dropped. Hit Control D. To duplicate that line, bring that line to the lower part, drop it, grab one of my other circles, snap it to that location. All right, and this one here, we're going to line it by eye with crosshairs. Try to get as close as we can. Considering how big the drawing is um, enlarged for what I'm going to end up with, um, by the time I scale this drawing, let's say um, I'm going with a, uh, let's say this, I know for a fact where this goes. This bolt pattern is two inches, or where I want it to go, it's two two inches. So I'll scale to that. So um, as as Everything's going to come in to where, it, where it'll end up fitting. Uh, you'll, it'll make a little more sense as I go. I want to find the center of this to the center of here. I want to hit Control D, duplicate that line once again, drag it from this center point, snap it in, take this line, work it into that location. Okay, now to pick up this arc, this arc, this arc, and this arc, what I want to do is draw a circle starting from this point, working out until it intersects with the square. Alright, once I have that, I want to make three more. Control D, two, three. We're going to take these and just drag them into location now. These are the same radius on all of these, so you can see it if you look at the drawing close. And if you can, uh, hopefully you can make out the uh, background clear. Um, so everything's matching up so far. Um, now what I need to do is pick up this arc. So to pick it up, I want to start from the center of this circle that was our original. Come out just until I intersect that arc. Drop that in place, hit Control D to duplicate it. Grab this piece. Snap, oop, got everything. Snap it into position where it belongs. Click off the screen. Okay, now I have all the outside arcs, but I don't have um, these inside radiuses here and I'll show you how to pick them up. Um, first, let's get rid of this box. Let's get rid of some unnecessary lines. I'm going to get rid of this box. We no longer need um, these locating boxes and lines here. Uh, we no longer need these two lines that we're lining up there. These lines that we're lining up. I used as measurement. Okay, there's my bolt pattern circle layout, my two center hole layouts for ports, if probably an intake part or something like that. Now, I want to select all. Sorry, I'm bumping around here. And I want to um, group it first. Use the most common setting. Then once the line's grouped, I want to intersect it. 
oops, excuse me. I want to ungroup this. I made a mistake. Ungroup it. Edit select all. Line. Intersect. All right. Now, it highlights some. I'd never go with its default. I'll just go ahead and shut this off. And I want all the outside lines. So with my delete key, I'm just going to select and delete all the lines I don't want. working my way across here. And you can start to see our shape forming. match the to trace the actual drawing underneath um, pick up the last few lines here I think there's a line right there yep I think there's a dot right here no nope, that's a dirty screen <laughs> okay pick up this line this line all right so we've got most of the shape correct and most everything lined up here but what we need to do now is actually add the rest of the radiuses and what I should have done first was actually check this measurement so I want to draw a circle here again I want to see what this diameter is and this diameter is 3.609 3.609 for a diameter we'll divide that by 2 I'm just going to hit escape I'm just using that to measure. Um, let me grab a calculator real quick. 3.609 um, divided by 2 will give me the radius for these outside arcs. And I'll, I'll show you how they fit here in a minute. 1.804 Eight, zero, four. It's uh, 2 o'clock in the morning here, I'm, so if I sound a little funny, I couldn't sleep, my back's hurting, and so I figured if i got to sit up, I might as well make another video. So, we'll shut this off. Um, what I'm going to do is select everything, once again. That looks funny, it's just playing with me. Um, now that everything's selected, I want to hold the control key and deselect everything except for the outside portions. Now these are still segmented and these will all have to each be grouped back into actual circles so I'll come back and do that also. Um, but first I want to add those outside radiuses and show you how to do that. Uh, let's see if I pick that up. There it goes. All right, so everything in the center now is deselected. While I've got this selected, I do want to group this line. So I'll take line, group. Now that made that all one line. If I click off screen, re-click on it, that is all one line. Um, while I'm at this, I'm going to go ahead and select each one of these and group them. Um, I can hold down the control key and just, well, it's easier to just grab everything, hold down the control key, deselect the outside because that's a group, um, and regroup these. Okay, so. 
Now that isn't what I want to do. On group these. Line. On group. Okay, get to watch me make mistakes again. Okay. We'll select each individual one, go to line and group it, make it back into a complete circle. Um, if I didn't do that, when I tried to find the center of it, it'll jump around. That's not enough of it. Let's get the whole thing. Line, group. Line. That one's playing with me. I'm doing another one. Okay, let's go up here and save this just a second because it's acting up. It's probably because I have so many things um, in the background. Once again, I'm going to try to group this one now. See, it should say it's either already grouped or ungrouped, and it's not. So I'm going to uh, reopen this. Give it a few minutes here, and hopefully it'll straighten out the problem I was having. Okay. Pick my select tool again. Hit line. Now nope, that one's already grouped. They are grouped. Okay. It's not giving me the option to ungroup them. That's grouped. That's grouped. That's grouped. And that's grouped. Okay. That's what I wanted to accomplish. Now. On this outside line, I need these uh, the radiuses in here. And what this radius is, um, it's the same radius as right here. Um, and I'll show you how I know that. It's, it's reversing this arc to meet this one. And the easiest way to pick this up is to say line, corner, round. I'm going to do the inside ones because those are inside points like this. And here I'm going to type in that number I did on the calculator, 1.804, and click OK. Try that again. For some reason, the software is messing with me here. Line, corner, yeah, inside and outside. So for some reason, here it goes, I think. There you go. So now, if you can see the picture in the background, um, you can see that all of my arcs now intersect with the background picture. Uh, let me click off screen here, maybe you can see it better. You can't, uh, if I select it all and pull it down now, you'll see the, the original drawing in the background and how well it does match. Um, I could just nudge it down a half inch and then you can see it. Okay, if you see these lines in the background, we picked it all up. Okay, so now for scaling this, I know that where I want this part to fit, the center of this bolt hole to the center of this bolt hole is two inches. So to scale this part so that I can machine it so that this is two inches across here, even though I took it off a of drawing and I'm nowhere near that, my total dimensions are uh, way different. My total dimensions are 15 inches by 9 inches, and I need a 2 inch bolt hole cir circle. So let's take and select all, and 
let's group it. Use most common settings. All right. Um, I want to measure now from the center of this hole to the center of this hole because I know my known dimension for this dimension, this part of this drawing, is two inches. So whatever I see here um, for that line, and that line's length is, oh, let's get in the right box, is 12 point one five nine okay now bear me with me here a little bit because it does get confusing I want to put this entire drawing okay in a box that's equal double this distance all right so that'll be twelve point one five nine find my calculator again Twelve point one five nine times two equals twenty four point three one eight. So just click off here. Twenty four point three one eight. Draw a box. Twenty four point three one eight. Right-click on that, copy it, right-click here, paste it, hit Enter, and there's my square box. I can go ahead and delete this line out. Grab this box now and drag it down. If I can get it in full screen, if I if I can't, I'll have to. Yep, it's gonna. And I need to snap this. Let me just hit equals and get everything on the screen. The equal sign on the top of your keyboard will make everything fit in the screen. Okay, I need to grab this box and have it snap to the center of the drawing. Okay, make sure I'm right. There it is, let go of the mouse. Okay, now the part centered in this, this box and I want to select all, so I'll go edit select all now I want the distance from here to here to be two inches so I put this in a square box by square it'll scale everything equally so the tops gonna um, the tops gonna um, scale down in an equal proportion because it's sitting in a square box so since I want two from here to here, I put it in a box that's double what the distance I measured was from here to here. Okay. Now, while this is selected, I'm going to go up to the top and tell it that since I want two from here to here, I'm going to tell it that everything that I've selected now, its dimension is four inches by four inches going to give me a warning. I'm going to tell it I don't do it anyway by four inches. Hit enter. And now you can see that I've scaled it down and we can hit um, equal sign to bring it back into the screen and click on the screen. Just select the box and go ahead and delete it. And now if I take a measure you can see that I made this part from a drawing I pulled off the internet. Oop, I didn't catch that right. Try that again. And I missed it by three thousandths of an inch. Um, my bolt hole centers, uh, this part is actually pretty close to the dimensioning. I could actually go up here in the tools and uh, I could drop this back in a box 
I could take and drop it back in a box and do the same process over again, putting it back in a square and then scaling it down again uh, by telling it the box is four inches and it would correct the problem. But this is close enough for you to understand what, what exactly I was wanting to show you. So um, hopefully that's, that's helpful for some, especially modelers, people who like to uh, try to draw or copy things that they see on the internet. Um, I'll drop this down in size now and move it to the side and you can see that there's our background picture and get rid of the calculator and there's the part we've actually drawn. Now this could get quite elaborate. Um, I needed to actually make a CAD drawing to engrave um, a girl onto the side of a sh uh, 38 special shell casing for jewelry for something my daughter was doing and uh, let me show you an example of the tracing and what you can actually do um, let me open up another picture here and um, see if I can find let me um, size type where we at? I need type. I need to find what type. Type file. Let me find a DXF file here. Dragon Girl 2. Alright, let's go back into um, I'm going to go file open Dragon Girl Trace okay I'm not going to save this drawing I don't need it for anything but believe it or not this is actually a CAD drawing and I did it exactly by tracing um, I don't know where this circle came from but it don't belong in there um, I did this by tracing a line art drawing the same way um, taking the mouse and actually holding it down and freehand drawing it with this tool right here. You can draw anything you want. And it and it was a lot easier than trying to convert an actual um, bitmap or JPEG or something like that to a DXF file. And the final result, let me see if I can find a picture of the actual shell casing once I engraved it. Um, Let's take large icons. Ah, right here. Oh, this is actually a defective one, but you you got to consider this is uh, this has been engraved into uh, <coughs> a 38 special shell casing. So this was a damage in the shell casing, and since it was first one I did. Um, I used a bad one just in case I messed it up, but if you can see, she's got her garter belts, the straps on her shoes, her earrings, uh, she's got her finger in her mouth, so that, that's pretty good uh, CAD drawing, I, I think myself, so, <laughs> but, and she ain't bad looking, so, anyway, so that's all for this recording, let me uh, go ahead and close this out, I know, uh, <clears throat> One of the other gentlemen told me that I can actually hit the hotkeys to do this, but uh, Hypercam don't want to shut down with the hotkeys because the program I have on top, it's a hotkey for it too, so I'd, I'd have to change them. So that